So I came to COA, as many, um, with the intention of saving the world. I was an environmental activist since high school, um, and when I got to COA, I started out studying environmental law and policy pretty intensely with Ken Klein. I think I took most of his classes, at least. Um, I worked with the Sierra Club, with Greenpeace. I lobbied in D.C. for public lands legislation. I ran climate campaigns on campus and across the state. And then I went to Copenhagen before doing an internship with Greenpeace in India. Um, I went to Copenhagen for the climate negotiations. And in Copenhagen, I became incredibly frustrated with political systems. And I realized that such large-scale politics might not be the right venue for me to create change. Um, because it was so difficult to create real relationships with people. And it sort of felt like everyone was just there to network and it didn't seem, in a lot of ways it was very real, but in a lot of ways it just, it wasn't my, it wasn't my scene, I guess. Um, and so I started at a very local level and worked my way up to the point that I really had no idea why I was there and what I was doing and all of that, you know, mid-college crisis stuff. Um, I sort of needed to find my original inspiration from my, for my motivation to save the world. Um, and I discovered that my inspiration was really about people. And so since it had been steadily increasing from local to state to national to international levels, I decided to backtrack and go back to the beyond the local level to the, the smallest level possible for creating change. And I wanted to look for the smallest ways in which people, in which people make a difference in the world every day to find the small things that people do for each other. And I've been listening to This American Life for years um, and was um, through, sort of through them, just decided on my medium for this project, which I've titled The Kindness Project, in which I've recorded stories of acts of kindness by everyday people, um, anybody that has a story to share, um, and everybody has thousands of stories to share, probably. Um, I've mainly compiled them in Bar Harbor and in Portland, and I've created, I've edited and narrated them and put them on um, the website, humjournal.com slash kindness. Um, and this project has definitely succeeded in inspiring me. I've realized that there are so many ways in which we influence the world in a positive way, and one of those may be as simple as kindness. Um, and I'm going to attempt to play a story um, one of the shorter audio stories, and I'm not sure if it will allow me to. Um, this is by, or the story is um, about Max Friedlander. Hey, why is it not recording? It is recording. Oh. I interviewed Max, my professor's five-year-old son, one night while I was babysitting. We sat on the floor of his playroom, playing with Legos and a toy treasure chest. Max wore my headphones so he could hear our conversation amplified in his ears. We had to do quite a few different sessions because he kept wanting to hear whatever we had just recorded. Between talk of toys, boats, Legos, and pirates, we had the following conversation about kindness. I'm Brooke Welty, and you're listening to The Kindness Project, stories of everyday kindness. I say things. Thanks. <laughs> do you know what kindness means? Being friendly. Being nice. Being nice. What do you do that's that's nice? Share, help. Are people are people nice to you? Mm -hmm. Um, some of them are. Yeah. What do they do that's nice? They play with me. Are pirates nice? Mm, not really. Some pirates are. Yeah. Yep. Some pirates are. Some aren't. Max goes on to describe something that happened while at school with his friends Liam and L. Um, L knocked his um 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 house down where his train was living on, and they laughed, but I didn't. And that and that, and he and he hugged me. That made us feel happy. What happened? L knocked it over, and then everyone else laughed, but except me, I didn't. And and Liam hugged me because I was his best friend because I knock it down or laugh at him. Why didn't you laugh at him? Because. He w didn't want me to, uh, so I hold my laughness. You held your laughness? Mm -hmm. I did. For Max, kindness is what happens when someone plays with him. It's something that someone does for him that makes him happy. It also means being nice to a friend, sharing, and often for a five year old, being nice has immediate rewards, such as a hug to show that he has done something kind. 
His five-year-old concept of kindness is so genuine and unadulterated. He even understands that the world is not black and white, that all pirates are not necessarily bad. Special thanks to Max for the interview and to his parents, Ursula and Jay, for allowing me to interview him. I'm Brooke Welty. Thanks for listening to this installment of The Kindness Project. For more episodes, go to humjournal.com slash kindness. Um, so that's just one example of st- some of the stories. That's the very shortest one I have and also the cutest by far. Um, um, but the other ones are all um, very unique and and pretty interesting also. Um, So this past term, I've done an independent study in which I've compiled um, a few of these stories, Max's is included, into a radio show that was aired on WERU this past Friday on Ron Beard's show, Talk of the Towns. Um, And I plan to use my connections with the media that I gained from this experience with grassroots, or with my experience with grassroots activism to continue trying to get this out there more with, on other radio stations and this next year, I tend to travel across the country and to continue collecting stories of acts of kindness um, to add to the website. Thank you.